Which pleasant surprises did you miss in September last year? Let's find out on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is Thursday, January 5th. I am Frank Sample, joined by a returning Scott White. And let's take a look at some of those late season standouts, starting with two hitters that potentially helped you win fantasy baseball championships, Jake McCarthy and Joey Manessis. They did it very different ways. Jake McCarthy had 22 steals from July 11th on, which led all of baseball. Uh, Joey Manessis, awesome batting average, 324, 13 home runs, a 930 OPS. Scott, the early ADP, Jake McCarthy, 129. Joey Manessis, 199. Are you buying either of these late season standouts from September? I mean, I'm not blown away by the value for either. Obviously, Jake McCarthy has his uses as a steel specialist, and uh, he he is getting some of that stolen base markup we've grown accustomed to in in roto leagues. I don't think it's going to pay off as much for people this year because I think with some of the rule changes, pickoff limitations, and whatnot, stolen bases are going to explode and they're going to be a lot more available. And, uh, you know, so, so that for that reason, even if McCarthy is able to follow up on what he did, and it was really impressive over the final two months, 19 stolen bases, that would have been the 25th most over the entire season. Right. So it was, it was a good contribution from McCarthy, but I, I don't think, you know, even if he can't live up to it, it's going to be, uh, it, it, it's going to be entirely worthwhile at that point in the draft. Manessis is a lot cheaper, I think there's a lot more questions about him. He's 30 years old, kind of has a Frank Schwindel feel, but the the data, the Statcast data for Manessis backs up what he did more than it did in Schwindel's case. Average exit velocity 91.4, max exit velocity 111 miles per hour. Both of those really good for Manessis, and so that gives me some hope he could uh, uh, maybe come close to performing at the level we saw late last year and, and the fact he's outfield eligible helps as well let's move over to o'neill cruz which was a huge standout in september and someone who people are very excited to draft this year and rightfully so that final month he hit 288 with six home runs five steals and 884 ops and a 29.8 percent strikeout rate that is the difference before september his strikeout rate was nearly 38 percent scott to me this is the difference between a Joey Gallo level player, 38% strikeout rate, and a potentially Aaron Judge level player with a 30% strikeout rate, that is O'Neill Cruz. Yeah, I mean, talking about Aaron Judge at the start of his career, because now Aaron Judge is more like a 25% strikeout guy. But yeah, when he first started, closer to 30%, like we saw from Cruz in September, and it didn't matter. That's a high strikeout rate. It didn't matter for Judge because of how hard he impacts the ball. And Cruz is on that same level. You're a stat cast. He's impacted the ball. Uh, he has the hardest impact ball ever. So um, Cruz is in that category and would probably do great striking out 30% of the time for the month of September, 288 batting average, six home runs, five steals, 884 OPS with that 30% strikeout rate. Can he carry that over to next season, maintain it over the full season? If he does, that's probably enough for him to deliver a stud outcome and uh, outperform his draft position, which is already you know pretty optimistic, I would say. It's not factoring in as much of the downside as I would be inclined to do with Cruz. Uh, and yet he may outperform it because I'm talking about a guy with first round upside, 40 homer, 25 steel potential if everything goes well. Uh, so, you know. It's encouraging to see him cut down on the strikeouts a little bit in September and hopefully he can keep, he can keep it going. Let's stick in the National League Central with two Cincinnati Reds pitchers, Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo, who were awesome down the stretch. Lodolo, final six starts, a 2.48 ERA, 0.88 whip. Hunter Green, his final four starts, 0.78 ERA, 0.83 whip, 14K per nine. The early ADP, Scott, 120 for Green, 135 for Lodolo. It's... Uh, it's a decent price. It's kind of a steep price for each of those guys, but the strikeout upside is massive for both of them. Yeah, I think it's a little higher than I'd be willing to pay. There are some, you know, like Lance Lynn types going after them that I prefer. Uh, but from an upside standpoint, I mean, you just look at what they did at the end of last season. That's, you can understand why people are excited. Hunter Green, 
I, I actually have him one spot behind Nick Lodolo on my pitcher rankings. I, I think the downside is more evident for him. I mean, the overall ERA was 444, despite having that 0.62 mark over his final five starts. Uh, and the fastball, for all the velocity that Green has on it, is uh, is pretty hittable. He gave up a lot of home runs with it. Uh, and so, you know, he managed to overcome that for a five-star stretch at the end of last season, and maybe... Maybe some of the adjustments he made then will hold, or maybe it was just one of those fluky things that happens over five starts. That's what remains to be seen. Uh, but it's, you know, it's 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 weighing the risk versus reward with him. And um, for me, that comes out about 40th among starting pitchers. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.